cinematographer Mudeo Mueng has made a significant mark with the debut of his first solo exhibition titled Borno State of Mind. Now, the ser series Borno State of Mind explores the life in Chibak after his uh, harrowing event, focusing not just on the trauma, but also on the strength and the determination of the community to rebuild and re redefine their lives. Wang's work uniquely captures the resilience and the spirit of Chibok. It's a village in northern Nigeria that gained international attention due to the tragic mass abduction of 276 schoolgirls by the militant group Boko Haram back in 2014. Well, he joins us this morning to unpack his latest offering. Mateo, good morning. Thank you for your time on the SABC at this hour. Thank you. Good greetings. Well, greetings and salutations. I mean, it's, it's, it's an obviously an interesting story because it's nuanced. And as much as we're looking at 10 years later, 82 girls are still missing. Your involvement in the project, how would that have come about? Um, I initially went to the area Chibok to go film a documentary with a director I had been working with on another project. Um, so I had gone to work in motion Mm. And naturally being there and being a person who's always captured images, I was fascinated by the world, I was interested in the people, and there was the idea of how it had been all these years and kind of the story wasn't a thing anymore, even yeah. though there are still girls missing. So the idea of me capturing and, I mean initially I wasn't capturing to necessarily show the world, it was important for me to have images of those people for myself, I guess, too. Oh. Um, but it got to a point, it started making sense for the images to be shared with the world. Um, I teamed up with a great team at Path Nomad and they made it happen. And the idea is to continue the conversation too, because like you said, there are girls still missing. And yeah. as much as there's many other issues in the world, that's still an issue that needs to be dealt with. Yeah, highlighting or continuing to highlight the plight of these missing um, ladies, but or, uh, girls, but also the well, community they're ladies at large. They're not no, girls they're ladies anymore. now. They were forcibly, um, yeah. you know, entered in, enter into marriage and um, by, with the abductors. And, and there was that campaign hashtag Bring Back Our Girls, which you say obviously died down. You had celebrities and many famous people trying to, you know, play their part by holding up a sign. So, so, so fast forwarding, I mean, the emotions that would have come through in listening to the stories from from the community members how, how hard part was that um i mean it became very personal too i spent a lot of time with the people um but more than yes there was the pain but it was also important um to deal with what they're doing now to sure. either change their situation to improve their situation which myself and the director were more interested and also when you look at the images it is images of people who have gone through something but there's also like a spark in their eyes oh. that is what is more interesting to me at the moment is like regardless of everything that's happened in their lives yes it was very emotional naturally those stories are going to come out some of the ladies i was filming their daughters are still missing um i also filmed girls who have since come back. Mm. So I met m many different people, sad stories, but we really wanted to highlight the fact that um, they're doing things in their lives now, regardless of that. They're resilient, they're farming to take their daughters to school, even though Boko Haram does not want these girls to be taken yeah. to school. So regardless of that, they found a way to still have hope to still live, I guess, yeah. Mm, that light, that light in the eye is important. Um, yeah. It means that there's still hope and that they, they no, resilience and they want to continue. I wonder if you could then speak to the impact of education at large. You're speaking about how Boko Haram doesn't want them to be educated, etc. But I mean, just, just, just the impact that it's had on their lives since some of them have returned and some of them continue to, to try and exist in, the, in their circumstances. Um, one of the girls I filmed is now in varsity sure. um, and wanting to create impact and wanting to educate the world, in fact, about what's happening in the region. There's a lot happening in the region. Even right now, the, the region of Borno, yeah. um, there's floods in Meiduguri. Yeah. Meiduguri is one of the areas I photographed and filmed in. So, I mean, the impact of education has been clear throughout the world that it has a positive yeah. impact. 
Um, it is also, I guess, the reason why many of us are able to do what we can do. It isn't the only source to be able to get there, but we should not be living in a world where you could be telling people whether they can be educated or not. Yeah, it, yeah. it's tools that assist you um, along the journey. I, I wonder what challenges you'd have had to also incur in forming and in telling these stories. Were, were you at risk at any point as well? I mean, we were very much at risk a lot of the time. Um, the region is infested by Boko Haram. Yeah. Um, getting to Chibok is tricky. We had to have military transport us each time we went. So over the space of two and a half years, I went a few times. Um, from, I mean, f there's like Caspers and big um, military vehicles driving around the whole time with big guns and, you know, so it's like you feel the sense that anything and something could happen, but it's also you don't want to live like that, you know. Um, I was detained at some point for like a couple of hours. I mean, crazy things have happened, but when you were there and you're interacting with the people, it's just like, it's all worth it, to be mm. honest. Yeah. So what role can art in activism then play to highlight the plight of Chibok, the, 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 the women, the ladies at large, but also just Borno, Borno's estate, given what's unfolding with those dynamics in militant groups? Um, I mean, the idea of the show is really um, of the exhibition is really to continue the conversation. It's also to ensure that the images are seen as widespread as possible. Mm -hmm. So with the team um, that I'm working with, the idea is to try and take it to different places um, to continue the conversation. Again, I mentioned that these girls are still missing. So for as long as that is the case, the conversation should not mm -hmm. stop. So my contribution as a photographer is visuals as much as it's seen as art but um as i work as a cinematographer too storytelling is a major part of my life so Absolutely. i'm hoping the story continues mm. and is told everywhere how where are you showcasing it how do people also interact with you and, and get that information should they want to um, get more info as well so i'm um, currently exhibiting um, in johannesburg at 44 stanley um, at a space called path nomad um, it's been on since the 5th of September and it's ongoing until the 5th of October. People are welcome to go in, um, people are welcome to inquire about the work. Um, I often go in as well. Um, and the idea is to take it to other places. It would be great if it went to Nigeria at some point. Um, when I am in Nigeria, in Lagos and other parts and people find out that I've been to Borno. It's always such a crazy thing for them. They don't understand why anyone would go there because it's seen as that kind of space, you know? That conversation continues, but thank you for um, being part of the story and, and restoring our agency as well. There's a continent at large. Um, 44 Stanley's just down the road, so yes. perhaps you could take a, a walk later. But thank you for your time. We'll leave Pleasure. that conversation there. Cinematographer Muteo Mueng. Chatting to us this morning about his um, engaging first solo exhibition. It's called The Borno State of Mind. It fosters a deep understanding of the resilience of the human spirit in the aftermath of a tragedy.